In this episode of Zoomer Life. Now, in this particular example, it was cell phone antennas that's causing the electro smog, but there's a lot of things in our environment that are doing the same thing. We have them in our homes, we use them on a daily basis, and they're basically polluting our homes with electro smog. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. The uh, second of the two cautions I wanted to uh, pass along this afternoon, uh, cautions against uh, some of the byproducts of modern life, concerns electromagnetic radiation from cell phones. Uh, Again, a number of years ago, a small community of people who were rapidly identified as crackpots began to talk about the possibility of this problem. Uh, their arguments were immediately countered by the observation that millions of people, hundreds of millions of people worldwide use cell phones. They weren't all dropping dead in the street. And yet, <clears throat> as the years wore on, and these days practically every day, more and more information is being released about the possibility of genuine harm from these modern inventions. Uh, possibly the pioneer researcher in this field is a woman from Trent University. Her name is Magda Havas. She's here with us today, and she will address you next. Thank Magda. you, Moses. Thank you. I'm going to be talking about electromagnetic pollution. It's something I teach in one of the courses I offer at Trent University, so I'll be sharing some of that information with you today. And the title of my presentation is Rapid Aging Syndrome. What it is, what causes it, and what can we do about it? You might think that the information I'm going to present to you today is top secret because it's something that's not taught in schools, it's not discussed by Health Canada, very few medical doctors and healthcare practitioners know about it, and it's certainly not something that's presented in the evening news. Rapid aging syndrome is not um, something from the outside. What I'd really like to refer to it as something that we're aging on the inside, and this causes a deterioration in our health. And some of the symptoms include difficulty falling asleep, confusion, uh, chronic uh, fatigue, chronic pain, anxiety, depression, mood disorders, all the things that are becoming quite common in our society and something for which we take pharmaceuticals in order to deal with the symptoms. There was a study conducted in Spain in 2001 uh, where they looked at people who lived at different distances from cell phone antennas. And you might ask, who would live uh, within 10 meters of a cell phone antenna? And the answer is that a lot of people do. This is an apartment building in Toronto. You can see the gentleman here who's uh, standing very close to these two towers. And these antennas are regularly emitting microwave radiation. So every time you use your cell phone, it's communicating with one of these towers, and these towers are communicating with each other. People who live on the top floor are most at risk of being exposed, and those who live near these um, antennas as well are very uh, likely to be adversely affected. Now, the results from that study in Spain showed that people who lived within 300 meters of a cell phone antenna experienced these symptoms. And collectively, these symptoms are referred to as electro hypersensitivity. I prefer to call them rapid aging syndrome because all of the ones that we have here in red are the symptoms that we experience as we age. And indeed, many of the people I talk to who experience these symptoms explain them by saying, well, I'm just getting older or I'm living a very stressful life and that's why I'm experiencing these symptoms. 
Now, in this particular example, it was cell phone antennas that's causing the electrosmog, but there's a lot of things in our environment that are doing the same thing. We have them in our homes, we use them on a daily basis, and they're basically polluting our homes with electrosmog. And the one you see here in the middle are smart meters that are placed on every home now in Ontario and in many other provinces as well. If you could hear the radiation coming from these smart meters or any of the other devices that emit microwave radiation, this is what it would sound like. Electrosmog has also been associated with a lot of uh, degenerative diseases. They include diabetes, multiple sclerosis, it affects the heart, uh, causing an irregular or a very rapid heart rate, uh, causing some people to believe that they might be having a heart attack. It affects our blood. It's been shown to affect sperm mobility, and we know that it's been associated with various types of cancer. So we're talking about something that is really very serious and life-threatening. Some frequencies are beneficial, and these are the low frequencies, and it's showing that healing also starts at the cellular level. So if we can take care of ourselves, that'll take care of our body. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. What I'd like to do is share with you some of the research that we've done in this field. And one of the first studies I'm going to share with you is research we did with people who have multiple sclerosis. This is a woman who has MS, who has difficulty holding her hand straight, as you can see here in this short uh, video. I went to her home on November 26th, and we found that there was something called dirty electricity in her home. We plugged in filters to get rid of the dirty electricity. By the way, in her home, most of the dirty electricity was coming from a plasma television set, so plasma TVs generate a lot of this poor power quality. We went back six weeks later, and uh, this is what we found. There was absolutely no difference in the amount of medication she was taking. So we think that MS and some other neurological disorders are actually made worse if you're exposed to electrosmog in your home environment. Another example I'd like to share with you. Um, I took a blood sample from my finger, put it on a slide and put it under the microscope and had a look at it. And this is what my blood looked like in my home. My home is electromagnetically clean and I think you can see here um, that we have fairly healthy looking blood, single cells, a few cells sticking together. I then worked on a computer for 70 minutes and this is what my blood looked like. And later on in the day, I talked on a cordless phone for 10 minutes, and this is what my blood looked like. When you have blood cells like this sticking together, like a stack of coins, that's called rouleau formation. This is very unhealthy looking blood. It means that your blood can't take the oxygen to your cells, it can't get rid of waste products. So this is not something that you would want your blood to look like. I did another experiment with my blood, and this time I laid on a mat that produces pulsed magnetic fields at a much lower frequency than the cordless phone that I was using and then the computer I was using, and this is what my blood looked like after an eight-minute session on pulsed magnetic field. Instead of clumping, you've got now cells that are um, individual. They have their entire surface area where they can exchange uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen. So this is an example of very healthy looking blood. And what that tells us is that some frequencies are harmful, particularly high frequencies in the microwave band, and some frequencies are beneficial, and these are the low frequencies, and it's showing that healing also starts at the cellular level. So if we can take care of ourselves, that'll take care of our body.
When I first got into this area, I was really interested in the harmful effects of electrosmog, and much more recently, I've become interested in the beneficial effects of electrotherapeutics, some of the technology that's being designed to actually help people heal more quickly. And this is almost like the yin-yang of electromagnetic exposure. How can one form of energy um, in the electromagnetic spectrum be harmful and another form safe? I met Bob Conley a few years ago, and Bob, among other things, is a TV producer who's also interested in this topic, and we teamed up uh, using his expertise in making documentaries. One of the first trips we took was to Quebec. Uh, there we met Dr. Roland Drolet, who designed some equipment called Rumart, and that was originally designed to deal with rheumatism and arthritis. It seems to have a lot of other beneficial effects. Now you can see here that Dr. Drolet has a pad in his hand that you can put on a shoulder if you experience pain. He also have, has rings that you can put around your body and expose your entire body to this radiation. He received a patent for this in Canada in 1983, so the technology has been around for a very long time, but most of us don't know very much about it. When we talked to Dr. Uh, Drolet, he said he uses very low frequencies, the frequencies that are natural here on planet Earth. They're called the Tesla Schumann resonance frequencies. And this is like the heartbeat of the Earth, if you want to think of it that way. And he uses a waveform that's very similar to what happens in our body at the uh, nerve level, and it's called an action potential. So using a natural waveform and natural frequencies, he can help the body heal itself. We took his technology to Pennsylvania, and there we met with Dr. Uh, Jeff Marangel, who runs the uh, Bioenergy Med Clinic. And he has technology that's called electro-interstitial scan. And this technology scans your body and tells you whether or not you've got some imbalance somewhere within your body. And this is one of his patients, and you can see here that he has two electrodes on his forehead. He's got his, his hands and his feet on uh, metal plates. And once you scan the body, you can get information about uh, where you might have some problems. This gentleman experienced chronic back pain when he came into the clinic. And this is what the electro-interstitial scan showed. It showed that there was inflammation along his spinal cord that it was affecting different parts of his body. We then gave him a 10-minute treatment on the room art. And after that 10 minutes, he said that 80% of his pain had disappeared, which is absolutely phenomenal to have that much pain go that quickly. When we rescanned him, it showed that virtually uh, all of the inflammation had gone as well. Now, the last time I talked to Dr. Jeff Marangel was two weeks after this treatment, and none of the pain had come back. So this was a 10-minute treatment that was incredibly effective. And most of us simply don't know about this technology. Convert from your wireless technology to wired technology. That's a really simple move that you can make, and that way you're not exposed to this electrosmog in your environment. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. We've also gone to Sweden where they do a lot of work using different types of pulsed uh, therapies. And we went to the famous Paracelsus Clinic and met Dr. Thomas Rao, who heads this clinic. Now, Dr. Rao believes that dentistry is very, very important. You have to pull the mercury out of your teeth. You have to get rid of um, any kind of uh, problems you have because he believes that your teeth affect the rest of your body. And instead of using uh, painkillers, he actually uses electroceuticals to treat you. So he doesn't give you a painkiller when he pulls a tooth. He, he uses instead a magnetic field um, that is uh, placed around your head. You can use it for treating depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, compulsive uh, disorders. So that's a side effect of this uh, particular technology. From uh, Switzerland, we went to Liechtenstein and met with the chief executive officer of a company called Beamer, where they make mats that you lie on that give you this pulsed electromagnetic therapy. And there we were introduced to work uh, by Dr. Klopp, 
uh, who works at the Institute of Microcirculation. He's an expert on this. And the work that he's doing is absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to show you some of that uh, right now. He can take a video of what's happening in your blood in real time. And so what you can see here are blood cells uh, that are circulating through the vessels. And this almost looks like a traffic jam uh, along the, the 401 <laughs> during rush hour. And this is what it looks like after a very short treatment on the beamer. So by exposing your body to this very low frequency magnetic pulses, uh, you can simply increase circulation. So what does all of this mean? It tells us that with electrotherapeutics or beneficial electromagnetic exposure, we can improve blood viscosity, improve the circulation of the blood, and we can improve pain management as well without using um, any kind of medication. Now, it's one thing to use good frequencies, but it's very important to get rid of the bad frequencies that I was talking about. And so what I'd like to do is share with you some recommendations. Um, one thing that's very important is to keep the device away from your body. Indeed, if you go to the BlackBerry manual or the iPhone manual, they will tell you to keep the, the um, cell phone a certain distance away from your body. And in this, they also tell you to keep it away from the abdomen of pregnant women and the abdomen of teenagers. The other thing you can do is use, uh, convert from your wireless technology to wired technology. That's a really simple move that you can make, and that way you're not exposed to this electrosmog in your environment. You can create a sanctuary in your home. This happens to be a canopy that consists of silver fibers. So basically, you're making a Faraday cage for yourself. And people who have become extremely electrically sensitive need to sleep under one of these canopies, especially if they happen to live near cell phone towers where their home is being bombarded on a 24-7 basis. Now, you can protect your body when you're away from home using silver, and I'm not suggesting you use silver in the form of jewelry, but once again, fiber um, that's placed into your underwear, used as lining in coats and jackets, um, that will repel this microwave radiation. And individuals who are very sensitive will wear this on airplanes, for example, so that they're not exposed. We have to educate the healthcare practitioners and the medical doctors so that when someone comes to them complaining of some of these symptoms that are really quite generic, they can ask them key questions about what they might have in their home environment that could be contributing to this. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. Now, some of what I've presented is quite disturbing, and some of it is uh, quite encouraging. What's particularly disturbing is that 30% of the population have symptoms of electrohypersensitivity, and that another 3% of the population are so sensitive they've become refugees in their own home environment. Uh, these people are moving away from cities, uh, trying to find a place in the country where they can live. It's also disturbing because the levels of electrosmog are going up and up and up. We're putting Wi-Fi into schools. The 4G antennas are coming uh, to the neighborhood near you. And these are very powerful antennas that are simply going to increase our exposure even more than it is today. Now, it's encouraging uh, because we're beginning to understand how the body heals itself. Doctors don't heal you, your body heals, and we simply promote that healing process. And we're beginning to learn about therapeutics, electrotherapeutics that can, can uh, enhance that healing process. Health Canada and the World Health Organization are limping in the right direction, so you know, if we keep pushing, 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 we'll get better guidelines. And we know that the media is also beginning to cover this, so this is all very, very encouraging from my perspective. We all have an important role to play in this if we want to protect our health and if we want to make the future safe for our children and our grandchildren, and this is something I feel very, very passionately about. What we need to do is we need to get rid of Wi-Fi in schools. 
We need to have better guidelines established by uh, Health Canada. Right now, they don't protect us uh, sufficiently. We have to educate the healthcare practitioners and the medical doctors so that when someone comes to them complaining of some of these symptoms that are really quite generic, they can ask them key questions about what they might have in their home environment that could be contributing to this. And we have to prevent antennas being placed this close uh, to homes and to schools. All truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. The information I've presented in this talk today, within the next five to 10 years, will be self-evident. And some believe it already is. Thank you. Bravo, Magda. Thank you very much. I think Magda's experience is really quite exemplary as you see the trajectory from a lonely individual speaking against a torrent of uh, scientific criticism from your colleagues, mm -hmm. really. You were that lone person up against all the other scientists saying you had no data. And now the World Health Organization is agreeing with you. I thought Health Canada's warning was really quite funny. Their suggestion is that children under the age of 18 should limit their use of cell phones. Good luck. Good luck. And now, as we face the next iteration and everybody's going to 4G, is there an implication that there's even more power in these transmissions than before? Those antennas will go 20, 30, 40 kilometers, so they're going to be much more powerful, and hence more people are going to become ill. All right. Yeah. It's, it's a subtle thing. You don't want to be fear-mongering. These devices have become essential in our lives. Tell me, what risks am I taking by keeping the smartphone in my pocket? You should keep it on airplane mode. That well, way then you don't it won't get... receive. Correct. Uh, and you only receive impulses. Correct. When you're holding it out there. That's right, yeah. This might yeah. not be a good place to have mm, it. No. Not if you want to have any more children. Thanks, doctor. <laughs> Thanks, Moses. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.